Welcome to Kevin Richards VIPs. For those of us that absolutely love Charlie Chaplin, nobody portrays him better than my guest, Jason Allen. Hi. So I'm sitting with my amazing guest, and I mean, like, I don't often get to use the word genius, but this man is a true artistic genius, and I've been looking forward to getting to know you, Jason, for quite some time. <laughs> you are so funny because you're so humble with this. And <laughs> When I first met you, mm -hmm. it was a New Year's Eve party. Sandra Roberts was putting it on. Yeah. It was at the um, Hudson. And we're, uh, I'm just standing there and I'm mesmerized by you walking around oh, cool. because it was like some, there's people who say that they can do things, right? Mm -hmm. Oh, I'm going to be Charlie Chaplin for an event. And then there's somebody who was, just embraced the spirit of Charlie Chaplin. And you're it, right? Wow. Well, yeah. and I, I, I really appreciate what you do as a person for, you know, embracing this. So I've been looking forward to talking to you. So I'm Excellent. gonna shut up and talk to you now and, and learn about you. So tell me a bit about where you grew up and, and where you're from. Well, um, I grew up in Bradford, Ontario mm -hmm. uh, and moved to Innisfil when I was 17. So, and that was in 1988. A little while ago. A little while ago, yeah. So I moved right here into, in Lafroy and uh, started dabbling more with theater. Mm -hmm. after I was 17 but uh, yeah I was I still went to Bradford High even after that the Did bus you? right down there the bus driver just happened to be a neighbor that yeah. went to Bradford High so I finished my time at Bradford High cool yeah. so what was that like growing up for you what were your interests back then you started to like theater yeah I, I loved performing since I was little mm -hmm. and uh, you know, my, my, my youngest child is very very similar to what what I remember being a little kid like to entertain my parents like to entertain friends try to get attention any way I could mm -hmm. and uh, tried to find my sense of humor and knew what was funny and what wasn't by people's reactions and, yeah um, I, t I started to take it pretty serious by the time I was a teenager and doing things on stage at Bradford High and um, and then hearing about community theater in Cookstown South Simcoe Theater mm -hmm. and you know, my drama teacher in, in high school, uh, Stephen Bainborough, uh, at the time, fantastic uh, mentor for me and really helped me um, have a good example of what it takes to really perform a little bit without... It makes a difference. A huge, yeah. huge difference. So I wanted to emulate a lot of those qualities and I, I tried and, and I, got, I found myself that way. Yeah. And um, Well, it takes the right drama teacher, I think. There's some teachers absolutely. who can find the right things. I don't know if you're inspired by your math teacher. I don't know, but yeah. but inspired by a drama teacher that helps you to find that out of your comfort zone sure. or that out of the box thinking is what they are inspiring to do. Right? Well, yeah, and I could relate to him because he seemed to be the youngest teacher in the school, so that was the closest to our age. Yeah, it? but he was also charismatic and everything a a young boy wants to be grow up to be oh, cool. type of thing. So yeah. a, a lot of people, he well liked teacher and um, fantastic. With mm -hmm. drama so you, you kind of if you're already inclined that direction you're going to really stick to it sure and uh, help me out a lot with uh, building myself cool yeah. so then you kind of progress from there and now you're enjoying theater what was your your next step though after you're in high school you you know I don't know how long it was until you met Barbara yeah but, you know how long was that after high school you met Barbara uh, I met Barbara actually way later it was 2008 that i met barbara okay <laughs> so, so then before that then there's a there's a gap before that the yeah. pre-barbara yeah. right what what was that like for you you know um transitioning what was it that you started to do first i i first started to do things in theater and in, in uh in high school and, and stephen bainbro my drama teacher uh suggested this south simcoe theater mm -hmm. community theater which is free for everybody to get into and just express yourself and learn with a director how to take direction yeah. how to take discipline that way as a as an actor mm. it's free I mean you you usually have to go to school for that kind of thing you'll have a musical director teaching you how to sing yeah. your parts you know if you're baritone or bass or whatever yeah if you haven't heard of that before you start to learn how to do that mm -hmm. Broadway musicals you learn Broadway musicals yeah so it by going to South Simcoe Theatre in Cookstown completely opened up my world. And you're submerged in it. Submerged, oh yeah, yeah. and working with people that are professional yeah. at times. Uh, met a, a, a good director, Steve, uh, or Scott Hurst. I've heard of Scott Hurst. Scott Hurst, great actor from Barrie. Yeah. And director and writer, everything, playwright. Mm -hmm. And uh, another one of my mentors growing up, that was my next level up. Mm -hmm. And it really helped out knowing him. 
um, he, he became my director mm -hmm. in a lot of community theater things sure. and learned an awful lot. That pretty much nailed it. Well, you must have been doing something on a technical end too, because I watch that you're not just, um, you know, Chaplin on the other end of the camera. Yeah. One of the things that I think you've embraced with the original, with the real Charlie Chaplin was he spent a lot of time on the other side of the lens. Yeah. Right. He was yeah. very much his best critic, and I think you you exude that. You have this technical thing about you too that there's no way you didn't have some experience and some practice at that as well too. Well, yeah, that's interesting. That like the the technical part of where the angle that I come in at my stuff because mm -hmm. I'm now a filmmaker and a writer and a playwright, mm -hmm. uh, as well as the actor. I film and everything myself, so mm -hmm. it's an all-in-one thing. What, where that came from is I actually went to school for architecture, and uh, techie. Yeah, I did a lot of tech work there. Um, I owned a computer company in Barrie for for a number of years. Oh wow! And uh, so. The technical aspect, working with and teaching computers was my, my, where I came from. Sure. So, but my passion was an art form of acting and creating. Nice. And uh, so I did all that I had to do to pay sure. for the white picket fence with, with the technical stuff. But I built skills running businesses and, and doing all that that way and well, creating you a cornucopia of stuff, right? Like oh. you've got a real diverse bag of, of things you can throw out there and, and make it authentic. And every single one of those skills that I didn't know what I would do with them have all gone into my chaplain work, which I still can't believe, but it, that's the way it works. <laughs> well, let's, let's go to chaplain now, because sure. this is the stuff that you're, you're most internationally known for. Yeah. And, and this stuff is, I think it's mind-blowing. It really is. You're a mind-blowing guy. So at what point did you say, you know, you picked up the cane? Like, I'm not trying to go back to Robert Downey Jr. and where they called his bluff on how he chose to be chaplain and right. just, you know, he was walking past a cloak room and picked up a hat and cane, Yeah. right? What was it for you? Where was that moment where you thought, hey, chaplain? Wow, well, that's, there's a pretty interesting story there, and it goes back to Scott Hurst, actually. Hmm. He, he ends up being the nucleus of the whole thing. Well, thank you, Scott. Yeah, for sure, oh yeah. Um, being directed on stage and brand new, trying to learn how to learn how to be disciplined with a director and other actors on stage, and but still being a young boy mm -hmm. and wanting to goof around on stage when you're getting attention during rehearsals. And uh, I'm in the ensemble of I can't even remember what what musical it was. It was a Broadway musical we were doing, and of course I was not paying attention. And and <laughs> Scott's talking to one of the leading characters about a scene and I'm supposed to be in the background waiting because we're doing a song and dance thing so we're waiting and I'm goofing around and I kind of walked across the stage like Charlie Chaplin because I've always loved Charlie Chaplin. I don't remember not knowing and loving Charlie mm -hmm. Chaplin yeah. and uh, my body is physically like Charlie Chaplin's. We're exactly the same height, same weight, same everything. My hair is actually silver. And, and so I dye it black, just as he did. Uh, this white stripe here is real stripe. I just don't dye that part. But yeah. if I left it, the rest would be slightly darker. Yeah. And so did Chaplin. Cool. So those similarities kind of made me realize I'm just like him. Maybe I can move like him. And I was really young. No real target in place. It just mm -hmm. do it for attention. I did that on stage, walked and wobbled and did whatever I had to do. Scott stopped everything, walked right up to my face and said, if you ever do a show as Charlie Chaplin on stage, I want to direct you in it. And I'm like, wow. I couldn't tell if I was in trouble. Or a compliment, or that, right? But an explosion happened in my head and I, I was quiet for the rest of the it's rehearsal. It's your aha moment. Yeah, and I got a lot more serious after that and realized a lot. It's the best moment. Best moment. And it was years after, years, years after. It wasn't until 2005 that another mentor, who you've interviewed, Arkady Spivak. Oh, he's so great. Oh, yeah. yeah. Well, uh, Arkady saw a show that I was doing. I was playing uh, Rooster in Annie the Musical yeah. at South Simcoe Theatre. It would be my last musical that I did there, that mm -hmm. I was going to do there, because I was hoping to go professional after that. Mm -hmm. And uh, Arkady f was there in the audience and wanted to talk to me after about things that he was doing. Mm -hmm. And he asked me if I was interested in going professional. 
Well, his wheels are always spinning, right? He's oh. always thinking five oh, yeah. steps ahead of everybody on something, and he sees genius. Well, he he well he saw something, and I guess he wanted to put me in one of his shows, and as he did, he he put me in a musical. I'm not a singer, and I had to sing these songs, and uh, I played a character named Dick, <laughs> and uh, it was in uh, uh, um, jo uh, Joanne. Way to Witch from mm -hmm. Thunder Bay, okay. and uh, it was a great, a great musical. Anyway, we uh, that was my first one, and I went professional right away. So he he needed equity characters yep. mm -hmm. and uh, actors, so he made me equity right away, which nice. meant I could be Actra, which was my the union's prize. a big deal. It was a big deal for me because as since like being a little kid, since Sesame Street watching days. Mm -hmm. I watch Sesame Street and believe that that's not real. There's a camera there. Those kids are actors, and I want to be one of those. Mm -hmm. And uh, I always wondered how, what it took to get there. Sure. And I, then I eventually found out it, it took union, it took actor, it took professional. It does. And to get into that union, that's that golden ticket for a lot of people. Like they have ways around it where they can give you temporary, you know, actor status for yeah. like, you know particular things if they draw you in or whatever. But um, yeah, when you're full time and yeah, it's a big deal. And there's a big deal with this big too. deal, yeah. a big difference, but it cuts away a lot of the community stuff now that you cannot do. You can't mm -hmm. do community theater. Yeah. So well, that's why I haven't gone to LA. I enjoy being yeah. on Rogers local. Well, it's, it's, <laughs> it's extremely fertile, this ground. It's big. It's huge. And yeah. community stuff, Rogers is a testament to that. I mean, it's yeah. huge. Rogers is inspiring. Rogers, I think, is something that is a foundation for people who really just, if you love your community. Yeah. Right? Well, yeah, it's definitely community, but it's, uh, there's more to it for the individual. I mean, you get to express yourself to a completion of a project rather than dreaming. Yeah. It's real. Yeah. And that's... I mean, looking at it from where I'm standing now, that's one of the most important things is to actually execute your dreams yep. fully to, to see them. And then where do you go after that? So on that execution then, when was that first chaplain moment where you took a stage yeah. or a production or an event or what was it? Where was your first time you got to be yeah. Charlie? Well, it all happened with Arcadi Spivak again. So this would be the next level, right? Um, going from Scott Hurst to uh, Arkady Spivak saying to me after doing a couple of shows with him, uh, I did uh, Glass Menagerie, uh, Tennessee oh, yeah. Williams. I played the gentleman caller in that. Oh, cool. uh, so it was a serious play that I had never really. Uh, it's an intense at. play. Intense and fantastic. And uh, they mounted it in a really unique way there. And it was to my benefit that I was even involved. But after things like that, I was uh, we were sitting around, and our caddy says, "So, so, um, what kind of play would you like to do? Uh, is there anything you'd like to do?" <laughs> yeah, as our caddy would do. <laughs> That's good. That's a good one. Uh, so, just now, and, um, and so uh, he says, "Is there anything you'd like to do? Anything at all that you'd see yourself in as a role?" And I said, "Well." And other than the obvious You're ones that dying I dying to tell him. Well, no, actually. I didn't even, I wasn't even thinking it. It came out almost automatic with, and I realized it after. But the things, after I finished saying things like, oh, I'd like to play in Chicago, the, the, play, the musical Chicago, I'd love to play uh, the part that Richard Gere played. Mm -hmm. uh, I'd love to do that. Oh, this, that. But I would, I would really like to be Charlie Chaplin on stage. And I surprised myself. I thought, what? I never thought that before fully, but it came out. Then it's genuine. Very genuine. And he goes, hmm, what do you mean? And then I do remember at this point having a thought briefly back to Scott Hurst directing me days after I dreamt about it and thought about it and visualized. It kind of opened up that, that thought yep. that I never thought of since. Sure. And I just spewed it out. It's almost like I was waiting for this moment. I know I'm probably trying to make it all magical, but this is the but way it, it happens. Those, those moments are that's what... And it makes me crazy to think about it and it's just so what does our caddy do with it then so how where's your first performance where is it right there it's actually at talk is free theater when it was at the uh the molson drive through beer store mm -hmm. where which is now park place yeah there was the the beer store there that was closed and turned into a theater i remember that yeah that was talk is free theater uh it was in that that room one of those rooms where we're sitting there and he's asking me this and i said well i like to be charlie chaplin in a in a play where i visualize it being that 
it's all blacks and whites and there's jittery lighting on the stage and it's like a 3D black and white movie silent film. And so he gives you this moment. Yeah, he says, oh, that's nice. I said, yeah, because I was having trouble learning lines at the time. It was during a rehearsal, I believe. And I, I, you know, in my mind, I'm trying to go through my lines. I think it was Tennessee Williams' play. And uh, of course, I want to get out of doing lines like any good actor wants. Sure. And if I could only do a silent film character, I won't have to do lines. Mm -hmm. I'm very good at physical comedy. Yeah. And um, he goes, that's fantastic, but I want... Charlie Chaplin to talk. Why? That's what I said. And I go, well, no, no, I think it's more artsy, you know. Mind you, the and greatest talk- speech ever yeah. was by all him, words. In, was the one that he did all words and he's dressed up as Hitler. That's true. And that is probably one of the most amazing speeches of all time. It, it is. really is. It's in my top three, I yeah. think. And that speech, uh, at the other end of it, I did last year on stage in India. Wow. Which, dressed in full costume, everything, and in a documentary that was filmed. So, so let's unpack some of this. So we're going <laughs> to move past the local theater thing. We're going to get into the bigger stuff. Yeah. So now, you've do, now you're heading to the stage. You're doing your first show. Yep. What's your first show you've done as Chaplin? Well, there's still that conversation with Charlie, with Charlie, not with Charlie Chaplin, with, with Char- Caddy. Caddy. Uh, he, he says, well, if you write it, I'll produce it. I'm not a, I laughed. I said, I'm not a writer. I've never written any show. And inside, I'm going, yes, you are. Yeah, you are. Yes, you are. This is your moment. And he goes, no, write a show, but only under one condition that Charlie Chaplin, the man, talks in it. And we'll see. Hmm. I went home that night, and I swear I wrote a one-act, one-man play in hours that night. Flow. It just came out. And the, the end result was pretty much almost unedited from what I originally wrote. This, this right. play, and this play is called About Face, and I analyzed, I already, I had studied Charlie Chaplin huge at that point. I mean, that night, I, I really poured into it. I'd already known Charlie Chaplin stuff because of what Scott said. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you know, it kind of gave me a, a, a beginning for Amazing. it all. yeah. It got me prepared for this moment, mm-hmm. and it just dumped out on page. So... Then I got it directed. Uh, the director was actually the girl, uh, Emily, uh, Emily Key, who is actually the actor who is in the Tennessee Williams play. Mm-hmm. She went into directing, and now she's running a Norm Foster Festival in okay. St. Catharines right now. But she's, she's fantastic, super uh, talented, and tried out directing yeah. my work. And we worked well together, and she just killed it. It was my thoughts put on stage for me after I wrote it. And I couldn't ask for better. It sounds amazing. Yeah, and that was in 2005. So I mounted that play at Mm -hmm. that theater, Talk is Free Theater. Uh, However, it needed to be double billed with another play because mine was only an hour. So we needed act one and act two. I became act two. Act one was by a guy named Scott Hurst. (laughs) So our caddy decided to put another one man one act play with mine and double bill it for the night scott had been working on for the past 20 years or so uh, a one man one act show about charles lawton hunchback of notre dame interesting so the fact that he and i were doing this bookend work and then came together unbeknownst to me unbeknownst to him what a cool fit and then our caddy is the missing link that puts it all together mm-hmm. blew my mind again yeah so you get this incredible masterpiece completed. Oh, I'd like to say so, yeah. Well, I think it sounds pretty <laughs> awesome. So you move from this moment here, this incredible aha, brilliant flow, and you're moving forward now. At what point do you start to realize that Chaplin is now a real thing? This is yeah. something that is now being, I'm not going to do the hook thing, yeah. but you're now being hooked. You're now... Absolutely was. You know, that moment, right at that moment, once I was given the... Universal, go ahead to write a play. And the tools. And the tools and the, the place to do it. Um, that support is so important. I love when somebody's acknowledging that you can do this. It's so, it's so important to just listen to people who you think are going to be your mentor. Just listen and, and take it. Sure. And go with it. So uh, how does India and all this stuff happen? How does this go from this guy from Bradford slash Lafroy? Yeah. You know... Um, starting off at the Talk is Free Theater, suddenly wind up in India. And yeah. by the way, your picture in India of you hooking the sun with the cane is one of my favorite pictures, not just 
from you yeah. of all time. Like I, I love that picture. Wow. There's very few from another that... artist. I stood there and the sign. Yeah, but stood you had there. to get there. But I mean that that moment is something that it 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 captures you. Yeah, it captures Jason Allen. It captures Chaplin, and it captures India. Like it captures it a does. really great moment. It does. It's a beautiful moment. Well, I'm standing in Salt Flats uh, where they 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 bring in the the, the salinated water and thin pools of water and let the water evaporate and then they scrape off all the salt and mm -hmm. then sell it worldwide. Mm -hmm. Mountains of salt there, fields of it. It's fantastic. We we're filming a documentary at the time, and who came with me was another Barry guy, uh, uh, Brian Chisholm, and he's a great photographer. Fantastic photographer. Yeah, and he's a nice guy, and he makes me look so good, so good, and. Made the sun look good and made India look good all in one photo. Yeah, you know and it's I mean? funny because he he's very discreet. Like he's very kind of does his own thing. He's very below the radar. Yeah, but he's an excellent photographer. Yeah, he's an artist with pixels and is, yeah, yeah. So really what, so how does India happen? Let me unpack that a little bit. How do yeah. you suddenly wind up in India? And people are now drawing you to California. You've got something else yeah. coming up soon. But tell me about India, and then we'll go to California. Yeah, India is fantastic. It was uh, really, really going outside of my comfort zone and, and being open-minded about the planet and mm. what Charlie Chaplin did. Because I had been studying Charlie Chaplin so much, I was getting a new mindset of almost, I'm thinking, the way Charlie Chaplin thinks, kind of really broad strokes, so broad that it's you know, like mm -hmm. global-sized. So randomly, uh, it, and I, I, I remember this because I, I get asked this, uh, October 2013. Hmm. So we're jumping. Yeah, quite from, a bit. I mean, the, 2005, 2008, yeah. 2013. 2005 was the first time mounting that show there. But then in 2008, uh, in December, I, was, I remounted my play in Hamilton because Aquarius Theatre uh, from Talk is Free Theatre, they saw our show, uh, Scott Hurst and my double bill and wanted to mount it there. Nice. So many years later, I did it again. But that would be the last time I do theater because I eventually realized I want to make my own films. Films. Anyway, that's really what got me to India is uh, there's, a, there's a segment after doing that that I started creating my own Charlie Chaplin styled films starring myself in them. Yeah. So I learned a whole new skill set, a whole bunch of new stuff. And you've, you've demonstrated that you can make things so authentically Chaplin, even in a modern day on a treadmill doing Uptown Funk. Yeah. I was in hysterics laughing that because <laughs> I didn't look at it as Jason Allen from Lafroy. I looked at it as your Charlie Chaplin on a treadmill, what it would be like for him being on a treadmill. Like you captured so much of this time leap for somebody like him mm -hmm. and what it would be like for him to be on a treadmill too. It was a riot. Well, I got inspired by things that are modern. Mm -hmm. But I didn't, I, I wanted to keep it authentic as well. So yeah. that's kind of a up to me formula. That's mm -hmm. the artistic. It was bright. I, I had to make something up. So where I got inspired about the treadmill and dancing on it was from uh, the Ellen DeGeneres show. Yeah. They had a guy that had gone viral dancing on a, a treadmill, which I'm sure a lot of people know about. Mm -hmm. And the, she had him on as a guest. And he's fantastic. It was mes mesmerizing. And instantly I thought, oh, my God. If Charlie Chaplin had a treadmill back then, which there were similar mm -hmm. ones, a lot more ar archaic, and things happened. I just kind of, I, I, I learned from what happened to me in my past about my Charlie Chaplin stuff and yeah. learned to let go and not create with an end result so much, but let things just go fluid. And it's so great that it can be so international too, right? Because again, being a yeah. non-talkie, yeah. you don't have to learn a language to learn Chaplin, right? right? And, and it's a character as opposed to a language, right? And so when you're not being chaplain in India, what is it like for you to, to plan stuff out? How are you planning things out? What's your next adventure then mm -hmm. for chaplain? Because right now you've got a, a cool new character that we're not going to open the box too much on right now, but you've yeah. got this cool new character in Barry here, and his name is? Jeeves. Jeeves Edwards. Jeeves Edwards. Yeah. And he's at the Johnson Rev residence, yes. right? Yes. And that is about all we're going to say because yeah, he's a good I guy. know that you want to keep this in a box. But it is, you know, from what I'm learning about it is it's a wonderful new avenue for you too and a wonderful yeah. other outlet yeah. to step a different direction. For sure. So good for you for that. Wow, thank you. Uh, embrace that because I think it's awesome. Yeah. Um, so as Chaplin though, what is your next step for Chaplin? You said you've got something up coming up in California? Yeah, well, I've been to California three times before. Mm -hmm. uh, one place that uh, I've, I've really 
been investigating was a place in Niles, uh, Fremont, California, which is near San Francisco. And why that spot is because that's where SNA Film Studios was over 100 years ago. Okay. Uh, Spurs and Anderson had this theater or this um, this place uh, where they created uh, Keystone Cop films. No, sorry, scratch that totally. Um, so at uh, uh, Bronco Billy. Oh, stuff. okay. Keystone. Yeah. I'm I'm getting mixed up with Max Sennett days. And, yeah, and they used to get in, in the back California. of the cars and take off. Yeah, and, and that's where Charlie Chaplin first started. Yeah, Max he walked Sennett. onto a scene. Yeah, and and you can see that as uh, Robert Downey Jr. does it in the film. And he nailed it too. Yeah, yeah. big time. So Max Sennett, who is Canadian, but in California with this film studio, big movie studio, um, Charlie Chaplin, of course, became big there, created some fantastic giant films, but then wanted to branch out and do more on his own and got signed up with this place called SNA Studios in hmm. Niles. And they had another studio in Chicago. And uh, in Niles, there's a, a, an actual film theater or a, a movie theater, a Nickelodeon uh, building called uh, the, the uh, Edison Theater, mm -hmm. which is now a museum. Mm -hmm. And it's in the Niles SNA Silent Film Museum. Interesting. And I've been looking at that place because I know the history, I knew the history of it back. And realizing that's actually where Charlie Chaplin sat and screened his films before they were distributed to the planet. Yeah, there's some great old black and white pictures of him looking through things yeah. and looking through the film. Oh, yeah. I love those shots. Yeah, yeah. Some of those are in his studio, those photos. But this is even before he had his own studio. Hmm. Uh, he, he actually went, got paid enormous amounts of money to live in Niles or around Niles in order to film his first five films, I believe, mm -hmm. that he filmed, including The Tramp, which is... One of the, Probably the biggest. One of the biggest establishing films of, of the Tramp character. And some of the most beautiful photography is from that, too, with yeah. the little girl with the hat. And... Yeah, yeah. We've got tons of imagery to, mm -hmm. to just feast off of because yeah. of his almost 90 films that he's created as wow. a Tramp. And, but five, however, were created right here. And I can actually stand in the spots where he filmed them in Niles. So it was one of my dreams to just go there. Mm -hmm. Well, don't I get an offer from uh, a curator and the historian from that museum, uh, Rena, who, who sent me a message and said, we're having a thing called uh, Charlie Chaplin Days here. And it's a weekend where uh, they just celebrate Charlie Chaplin because he was there. He filmed right cool. there. Yeah. He, his feet stood there. There are pictures of him What there. a compliment for you to be asked to be there. Well, yeah, and it, a massive feather in my hat that I... I can't believe came my way, but it's because I had already been in India mm -hmm. and there was a much unsurprised, I mean, there's no surprise. Well, they recognized you through your genius of this. They see uh, that you're nailing this character. Yeah. And it's not just that you're, you know, a one timer on this. You're, this is a flow for you now. Yeah. So let me go as we slowly have to wrap this up is I, and it's a shame because I love talking to you. I could listen to you talk about the we history. We could do this in chapters. Okay, we, we could. <laughs> Chaplin won. So what I want to ask you then is when you're outside of Chaplin and you're being a dad, yeah. you got three wonderful boys and yeah. a super supportive wife yes. who's also learning her creative element now too yeah. and doing some cool things that unfortunately we don't have time to chat about right now. But what is your... What's your message? What is your thing that you would love to tell people watching on Rogers or online today? Yeah. What is your, what is your, 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 your message? What is it you want to tell people? Uh, I, I would say definitely stay in touch with your creative self and always, always be trying to level up in your life. If you're a creative, then what's the next step and get there, go there yeah. and listen to your mentors. Um, yeah, don't don't get sucked back into the nine to five. I mean, you have to. You still have to pay for mm -hmm. your life. You still have to do that. And I did. Uh, I did a lot of things I didn't want to do in order to have to pay the bills. Sure. But I didn't lose sight of what I really, really was my passion. And that's really important. And Super I need important. To, unfortunately, got to go. Got to go. It's so much fun talking to you. And thank you for being my guest on my show today, Jason. Thank you for coming to my house. Thank you. Cheers yeah. to you. Cheers.